We're putting together a bunch of ideas that, that we've talked about the whole quarter into something that, into a subject that's called thermodynamics. You've probably seen these kind, this subject before and, and so it probably will uh, feel comfortable. Hopefully you'll see how everything that we've done fits within that and why. So, so today is a little bit of uh, what's, what is thermodynamics about in the, in the most basic sense, the words that we use, what do they mean, and, uh, and, and why do we use certain, why do we think certain things. And then next week, and in the next week we'll practice more at that. So I wanted to start with something that I ended with last time, just to remind you. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to ask this one as a clicker question, but I'm going to ask the next one as a clicker question. Because almost everybody got it anyway, so it would just be a freebie and take a bunch of time for no good reason. Um, suppose nitrogen gas is inside a cylinder. So there's a this is a syringe. So it is a, a gas inside. It's air, but that's mostly nitrogen. And there's a piston that moves up and down. This movable part in the syringe is in fact just that piston right there. The mass I could change around if I felt like it. And what will happen is that, is that it gets compressed and then I take masses off and it comes back up again. I don't know if you can see that, but it doesn't really matter for right this second. Um, this particular piston was locked into place right there. So even though there's a mass sitting on it, that is not the thing that hold it, holds it in place. It was locked in here, uh, right there, and the mass just happened to be sitting there. And what happens when I unlock this? Well, there's kind of three things that could happen. It could still just sit right there. It could be that the mass is exactly, applies exactly the right pressure to cancel the, the pressure of the nitrogen gas. Or it could be the pressure of the nitrogen gas is bigger than what this mass supplies and so the nitrogen gas could push this piston up in the air after I unlock it. Or the nitrogen gas could be at a smaller pressure than the pressure that mass supplies so after I unlock it, it could sink down a little bit. What it does is it moves up. I unlock it, it moves up to here and my question to you was what energy decreased after I added the new mass. So, so this is a little like a question we've, at, we've talked about before and I, if I had asked for the energy that increased, I would have hoped you'd say the gravitational potential energy of the mass because it went up in the air. I asked for the energy that decreased and so, so we hadn't talked about this answer except that you'd, you'd seen the question before and the question before I think you also answered it really well. Uh, conservation of energy tells you that if one energy increases, if this mass went up in the air, some other energy went down. The energy that went down, well all you have to do is look at the interactions that were going on. The gas is the thing that pushed up in the air, pushed the mass up in the air. The gas somehow lost energy. It's N2 in both cases so it, it's not bond energy and so all it can be in the end is the thermal energy of the gas went down. So uh, the, the biggest group of you are figured that out essentially on your own or with your in discussions with each other. And I'm going to ask this one again just to check and make sure, although I asked this one before, I'm pretty sure. Same thing. Lock it here, release the lock, piston moves up to here. Remember the thermal energy of the nitrogen gas went down. I notice if I unlock the piston, it goes, the piston moves up to a new equilibrium point. And again, it's not moving. Delta E thermal is Q plus W. So I say if delta E thermal equals Q plus W. And I'm hoping you just know this one. <laughs> if total energy changes, 
for some system, if you have a system that you've defined, a physical system, and its total energy changes, then energy must have been transferred in or out. That's another statement of conservation of energy. Energy is conserved. The total energy is a constant. If the total energy of your physical system went up, then it's an open system. If it went down, it's an open system. If it went down, then there was energy transferred out. If it went up, then there's a net amount of energy transferred in. This is the energy we call heat. That's the energy we call work. And my question for you was about delta E thermal. So if delta E bond I guess there's two things here. E total could include internal energies it could include internal energies and it could include other energies. So it could include uh, the standard thing I would do here at this point is say, oh, there's bond energy for this thing, there's thermal energy for this thing, and there are other possible energies. Those are internal energies. There are other possible energies, and one of them is gravitational potential energy. So I'm going to pretend that we don't have gravitational potential energies changing, but only internal energies changing that we don't have kinetic energy changing, that we're not talking about this thing suddenly starting to rotate, so no k rotational kinetic energy changing, and no bond energy changes. In that case, this E total only includes thermal, uh, thermal energy. It only includes internal energies because of the first one. We don't have to include any energies that aren't changing. So it's only internal energies and I've ruled out bond energies by telling you something about the situation. In fact, you already know no bond energy ch is changing here because it's N2 gas in both cases. Phase didn't change, chemistry didn't, the chemical, re uh, the molecules didn't change. So delta E thermal is Q plus W. Which of the following can we say about Q and or W? In this particular situation, I've asked you before, but unless you remember exactly what the answer is, you'll have to figure it out again.